this short video, we're going to show you how you can use the turn and spin tool to create spun and turned shapes. So to access the turn and spin tool, you need to go over to your design tab and then over on the left under model and tools, you've got this icon here that enables you to create a shape by spinning or turning a vector. And if you click on that, that will open up the turn and spin form. And so the turn option allows you to take a profile and what it does is it turns or rotates it around a line from the start point to the end point in order for you to create a rounded symmetrical shape. So in order for us to activate any of these options, we need to select a vector cross section that we want to apply one of these options to. So we're going to click on this vector here and we've got a vector here that represents one half of a pepper mill. And so with the turn option selected, as I mentioned, what it does, it's going to take this profile and it's going to rotate it around an imaginary line from the start point, which we can see indicated by this black square here. Now imagine there's an imaginary line that runs from the start point to the end point, and it's going to take this profile and it's just going to rotate it around in order for us to get a nice rounded shape. And so with that selected, we can work our way down the form. We can select how we want this component to combine with any other components we may have in our job. In this case, we'll just set that to add. We can give this a name. So here we can just call this one Pepper Mill, like so. And then if you're happy with it, you can go ahead and press apply. And then we can take a look at the result of that over in our 3D view. Straight away, we can see that looks pretty good. Now, if we just click on the front portion here, we can take a look at our part up the Y axis. It'll give us a better understanding of what's actually happening here. And so the turn tool will always create a fully rounded shape so long as you don't have this option here, scale to exact height switched on, which we'll come and have a look at in a second. And what it does is it creates its highest point based on the widest part of your cross section, which is actually at this portion over here. And so if we just twiddle this back to the top view over here, and then if I hover my cursor over uh, this portion over here, you can see at the bottom right hand corner of the software that it's kindly displaying me the Z value here. And I can see that's at around 1.3514 and it's changing according to where my cursor is. In case I've got that 13521. Um, and again, that's just based on the width from this point here to this point here. And so we can measure that just to double check that. Um, but otherwise, if you are happy with this, you can simply close out. If not, you could reset that to start a new shape. In this case, we're happy, so we've already hit apply and then we can close out. Now over in the measure tool, we're going to click on that and we're going to click on this point over here and then we're going to snap to the center line that we've got here and if I click there, you can see that the distance that we're displayed here is 1.3522 and that matches the Z value that we measured earlier. And so that's where it's getting its height from. So let's just close out here. So we're just going to go over to our levels drop down up here. We're just going to switch off the pepper mill component for now. We're going to go into our layers bar. And we're just going to undraw the pepper mill layer. And now we're going to go on to our second example, uh, which is the spindle. We'll select that to make that the active layer. And we're going to take a look at the effects of using a vector that looks like this. So we can see here, this vector represents the side of a spindle. So let's go back into the turn and spin tool. We're going to select our vector here. We can see the start point is over there. And let's just go ahead now and just press apply to see the effect of that. Now, it isn't quite what we are looking for. However, it's actually created that accurately based on the vector that we have. So you must always remember that it will rotate or turn a vector about the start point. Okay, so here's your start point. And then remember the imaginary line 
okay and here's your end point okay so it's essentially it's just taking this portion and it's rotating that about that line which is what we can see here and we can see the result of that over here in the 3d view as well and the reason why it hasn't created the spindle that you might have thought it would create is because we haven't got any legs for our cross section which is all we need then to create that spindle so let's just reset that and we're just going to close out here we're just going to fix this cross section we're going to go into the polyline tool snap to there click and snap to the um, halfway point here and then again snap to the center line here and then space to accept that we're going to right click to come out of the polyline tool and we're going to select all of these vectors and we actually need to, to join them so we're going to go into the join tool use the join option and then when we select it now it's one vector okay so the idea now is that we're going to have this shape is going to be spun but over an imaginary line from the start point it's going to follow over here to the end point over here that should give us the shape that we desire so with that vector selected let's go back into the turn and spin tool and then we'll go ahead and press apply and we can see that's more of what we were expecting earlier and so here you can see we've got a nice rounded shape there and that's obviously again based on the widest point of our vector now if you didn't want a full half circle like we're seeing here then you have the option to use scale to an exact height which you could check that and then set that to a particular height so for example if you wanted the highest point to be 0 0.5 uh, press space to accept that and then you can see it will ensure that the highest point is at half an inch uh, but obviously you're going to get a much flatter shape but it could be just what you wanted so we're just going to actually uncheck that option as I want a full rounded shape there and we'll just take a look at this from the top view. Now if you wanted to actually make an edit to your cross section whilst in this tool you can do, you can access the node edit mode. So with your vector you can press N on the keyboard and then what you can do is you can edit the shape of it, press apply just to update that and you can see it updates as you saw over here. Okay, so then what you can do is you can give that a name. We can just call this one spindle. And if you wanted to, you could just go ahead and press apply and then close out. Right then, so we're just going to go over to our levels. We're just going to switch off the spindle component. And then in our layers, we're going to turn off the shape too. And we're going to now look at how to create a spun shape. So we're going to go back into the turn and spin tool. So this is the option we're going to look at where we can spin a profile and spin it around its left end point of the cross section in order for us to create a circular component based on the profile shape of the cross section. So what that means is if we select this vector here uh, and we can then click on the spin around left end point, it's going to spin around the left end point of this vector over here, which is this point here and it's going to spin it around to create a circle shape based on this profile. So here if we just go ahead and press apply we can see the effect of that there. And there we have a nice plate shape created easily just by using this cross section and then spinning it around its uh, left hand side. So I'll put that back to the top view and then we'll give that a name. We'll just call this one plate. And then we'll just press apply and close out. Okay, so let's just go back to our levels. Just gonna undraw the plate component and then we're gonna go into our layers and we're going to make the ripple layer the active layer by clicking that. And then we're going to take a look at another example. So we've got this vector here. We can see the left end point is over here. So let's just take a look at what happens when we use the spin on this one. Okay, so you can see we've got a real nice ripple effect. However, you can see half of our uh, circle is actually missing. And this is all down to the location of the left end point. So what we need to do is just reset this and then close out. Then we're going to take our vector, we're going to just snap 
that left end point to the center of our job we'll go back into the turn and spin tool where we can apply that and you can see now we can see the full circle and so hopefully you can see the effect of the position of where your vector is in relation to your job and the left end point and the result of your component so let's just call this one ripple and then we'll go ahead press apply and then we'll close out and then what we'll do is we'll take a look at our last example so we'll just turn this component off and we'll switch this layer off switch this layer on and make it the active layer and then we're going to select our cross section here we're going to go back into the turn and spin tool so we're going to use the spin option again and we'll just press apply just to see the result of what we've got here Okay, so two issues. So again, we can see that it's not quite uh, central in our job as we're missing portion of our shape at the top here. And we can also see we've got a negative space. Okay, now if I hover over the 3D area, now I'll take a look at the bottom right hand corner, I can see that the model thickness here is at zero. And then as I move my cursor over you can see we've got a recess here we can see negative numbers there then we're back to zero then we're back to negative numbers and we're back to zero and that's correct and that's all down to the way that our vector is so our vector actually has no height here which is why it's displaying this as zero and then obviously we've got a trough here so it's going to create a negative shape and then we've got no height here at all and so that's at zero and then we've got a negative trough and then we're back here at zero and so again this is very similar to the spindle so if we wanted to have height here then all we need to do is add in some legs um, so we can do that now but that's not to say that this might never be the effect that you want it's just if you did want um, a bit of a base height then that's what you'd have to do add in those legs so let's just reset that we'll just close out and then we'll go into the polyline tool and then we'll just click and we'll snap to the center there press space to accept that click here snap to the center there, right click to come out. And then again, let's just join those vectors like so. Uh, and then whilst we're here as well, we can check now, because we knew that we snapped to the center of our job, we should be able to create that full circle. So with that vector selected, let's go back into turn and spin, use the spin option. And then here we could go ahead and press apply. And there we have our full circle and now where we can see that when we hover over this area here we actually have a z value of 0 0.5 which is the length of this span that we've got here and then obviously our negative values uh, are displayed here but at this time they're actually positive because they're going into the positive shape that we've created thanks to the legs and so that's the basics on how to use the turn and spin tool in Aspire. Thank you for watching.